the week ahead, Diggers Copy TV interviews a special guest about the potential market movers for the coming week. Joining me now to discuss the next week's event starting Monday the 20th is John J. Hardy. He's head of FX Strategy at Saxo Bank in London, but today is joining me from the US. Hi John, first and foremost, let's start with the big question mark, Greece. Uncertainty in the FX markets is still to a certain extent being driven by Greek sentiment, as political tension regarding the Greek bailout intensifies. We need to see some developments produced soon in regards to the aid package, that's without a doubt. But the scenario is looking increasingly dim. How optimistic are you about the whole situation? Um, I don't know if it's a question of optimism or pessimism with the situation in Greece. Uh, I think they're sort of stumbling towards something here, uh, and, you know, despite all these, these short-term delays uh, in, in the situation. I think they're going to stumble towards some kind of deal. The question is how, how, uh, how durable the deal is and whether we have Greek elections in April and whether the French election cycle as well is interfering with the whole situation. So it's just a hard time seeing you know that that a Greek deal actually really puts a lid on anything in terms of uh, stability contagion and so on and and actually short term i think there's a bigger going to be a bigger market focus assuming we do get a greek deal uh at some point soon uh, next week uh and that's the uh, ecb's ltro which takes place at the very end of this month that being uh, not next week but the beginning of the following week and the size of that and, and the degree to which the market thinks that's um a positive sign for risk or or not after we've had this amazing uh, global rally in risk over the last uh, couple of months. Besides Greek concerns reigniting contagion fears, in your opinion, what else should market participants be paying particular attention to in the coming week? Yeah, I mean, there's still quite a bit of a, a, a euro focus here. We have the, the first, uh, the so-called flash uh, or pre preliminary PMIs for the eurozone for manufacturing uh, and services industries. Those are interesting to see whether the stabilization we've seen uh, quite recently, if that's continuing. Um, of course, Germany is a bit divergent in its strength versus the, the rest of the Eurozone, which is weaker, as well as German IFO on Thursday, which actually has been to tick up again the last couple of months as well. It's amazing the uh, resilience of that German uh, economy. So uh, those are a couple of uh, data points I would focus on. But again, I think the anticipation really around the LCRO, assuming you get a great deal, and that's not until the following week. Um, the other thing I think is very interesting is, of course, the continued very strong U.S. data. And although there's not very much U.S. data out next week, I'm interested in what this Michigan confidence data will show uh, on Friday. Uh, we saw a very strong weekly figure this week from the, the Bloomberg survey towards the top end of the range. It's a bit of a confusing picture. It's sort of the last area where we haven't had consistent good news out of the U.S. And we really need confidence to take up. Uh, for for us to really believe that the the U.S. Uh, recovery here is, is is more durable. What about some of the euro crosses and major currency pairs? Which pairs might be making the most movement in relation to some of next week's data and news releases? It's really the yen that's been very interesting this week, and whether it follows through next week, uh, the dollar yen breaking above uh, the key resistance, the 200-day moving average, and and the range here, 78 to 78 and a half, uh, and that was on the strength, uh, or not the strength, but the uh, the Bank of Japan. Um, announcement in which they're ma uh, announcing massive new easing measures uh, far larger than what the Fed is doing and as well looking at inflation targeting of about 1%. And this is a massive new sort of stimulus in terms of the QE direction uh, and it's this quantitative easing meme that the markets are playing on and driving or what's driving risk appetite and a very interesting development there in dollar yen and it's, it's going to be interesting to see whether that holds in the week uh, plus ahead. Uh, I think the euro dollar would tend to range uh, range trade somewhat. It, it could tend a little bit higher, but it'll it'll, it'll find itself capped consistently uh, because of the uncertainty in the euro. Uh, I think other euro crosses are interesting. I mean, the euro is a very weak if you look across the rest of the G10, and they could actually rally uh, versus those currencies, uh, uh, assuming we have uh, this uh, move, this sort of global rallying risk uh, if it finds some consolidation uh, in the week ahead because the euro is effectively a a uh, carry trade funding currency, and it'll tend to do the opposite of what risk appetite is doing in those more sort of risky currency uh, euro crosses. To finish up then, John, before we run out of time, this week we saw the release of jobless claims in the U.S., which dropped to the lowest level last week in nearly four years. It's a good sign of improvement in the sluggish U.S. jobs market. But what do you make of this data in the overall picture which is being created about the U.S. economy at the moment? Yeah, I mean, they say that employment is a lagging indicator, but certainly it's very, uh, uh, very strong numbers there. This was the lowest. This week's uh, claims number was the lowest since uh, uh, I looked at it this morning. I believe it was since early '08, basically, 
and that's uh, you know uh, that's driving a continued recovery in the jobs market. The question is the quality of the jobs. There's other data that's a bit concerning in terms of what the actual average worker is is getting between their uh, hands to, to to run out and spend. So that, that'll be a issue going forward to see what kind of durability this this um, recovery in the data has. Um, but you know, all in all, it shows uh, the status quo is that the, the U.S. economy is uh, doing well until proven otherwise. Thank you very much, John, for that extremely helpful insight. Now, next week on Duke's Copy TV, we'll have interviews and press reviews on all the major happenings in the financial markets. To so join us next time, but for now, goodbye.